Hi, I'm Mike Casper, co-founder and lead welding instructor for MTI DTC. This video series is a short, uh, a short series. The three types of welding we're going to cover are stick welding, MIG welding, and TIG welding. Those processes are prominent in our area and most of our markets, and they're pretty much the industry standard wherever, wherever welding's done. You're going to do one of those three processes. So we're going to start off today with some stick welding in a couple positions and uh, we'll get to it. So, All right, so uh, here at school, we have uh, several Maxstar 200s. Maxstar is just a name that Miller gives these welders. Uh, 200 is the, the maximum amperage that it'll run. This is a DC only machine, okay, direct current. So we'll come around the front of this and we'll look at what we got going on. So every welder, there'll be a positive and a negative. So when we're stick welding, our lead, our stinger will be positive and our ground will be negative, okay? This is called reverse polarity. And I'll explain that when we start welding, but this is our stinger or where our electrode goes, it's positive on the welder, ground will be negative, okay? Next, this machine has three dials. The first one, it wants to know if we're stick welding or TIG welding, okay? We're not TIG welding, so we're stick welding. This is our amperage right here. We're gonna run this 332 rod at about 90, 95 amps in the position we're at. And this dig is, if this wasn't on here, it would be set to 50. The dig describes how this rod penetrates. This rod penetrates fine on its own, so we tell the guys just to leave it on 50. Like I said, if this dial wasn't here, it would be set at 50 from the factory, okay? I'm not gonna get into all the, all the arc adjustment on that dial. Uh, with 7018 on this, it really doesn't make a huge difference, okay? So that's the setup. If, we're, if we've got this set up correctly, we're gonna be able to at least strike an arc with our, with our stick welder. So that's where we're at. All right, so uh, we're over here at the table. We're all suited up. We got our glasses. We got our, uh, you know, our PPE. I've got a, a, a jacket on. I've got gloves um, ready to go. So some other stuff that's been around for a lot, you know, forever, as far as stick welding goes, we have a chip and hammer and a wire brush. Okay, we can weld the world. What rod we use here is a 7018. A 7018, this is a 332 diameter 7018. Like I said before, we've got it set on about 90 amps. This rod is uh, the bread and butter on a construction site. They weld all mild steel with 7018, um, pretty much exclusively. Uh, we use 6010 here as well, but we're not gonna get that in depth into what we're doing here. So uh, 7018 is the brunt of our stick welding program. It's a great rod, so 70, 18, 70 means 70,000 PSI. So if you, what, what that means is if you were to take a, a, a couple starburst uh, fruit flavored chews, stack them together, you'd have about an inch by inch and uh, square. And if you pulled that apart, it would take about 70,000 PSI to pull that to snap it. So it's a very, very, very strong rod. Uh, we're going to be welding on 3 8 plate today. You can see I got it all polished up so we don't have a lot of spatter and you can see the weld. For the most part, I wouldn't suggest stick welding anything less than a quarter inch thick. It's just the 90 amps that it takes to burn this is going to burn up your, your base metal before you actually start doing any welding. So I would say, you know, some guys might prove me wrong and I understand that, but quarter inch, it'd be a little less comfortable. And there's some other processes we use in some thinner steel. So we got some 3 8 carbon steel plate and uh, we'll get to it. So there's some things that we need, you know, we talked about earlier on our setup. This is coming off the positive side of our welder. And I told you it was reverse polarity. What that means is the flow of electricity is actually coming out of this steel up into the weld or excuse me, up into the rod, okay? So let me say that again. This is on the positive side of the welder. What that means is the electricity is actually flowing backwards in our head, it's reverse polarity. It means that the current is coming out of our base metal up through our welding rod and melting it. And what that does is that helps with the penetration. I can, I can run on straight polarity. It's gonna sound odd and it's not gonna penetrate. And I promise you, if you do this on the job site, they'll probably ask you to go home, or at least you're gonna take a pretty decent butt chewing for the day. Always make sure that your welder's set up. So it's real, this is positive. This in turn, our whole table here is, is on the negative. It's grounded right there. So it's on the negative side, okay? 
So with that said, we got our, we got our, I'm a lefty, okay? So I'll explain what I'm doing left-handed first, and then we'll do the right-handed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you in the flat position. This is flat. We're just gonna weld just like this, okay? There's a bare spot on the end of this rod, and when I touch it that's grounded, it's gonna make an arc. And what I'm trying to do as this rod burns, it will burn just like a fuse or a candle really quick. I have to have my, my hand-eye coordination to where I can, I can let this burn and maintain an arc length. The arc length is the distance in which this rod is off the steel. I don't want it too much, and I don't want it all the way. So Goldilocks is about, I don't know, probably a, uh, anywhere from a 16th on in without touching it is about where we want to be. So it takes some hand-eye coordination to stick weld. Not only are we watching the puddle, which is the molten metal, we're having to adjust for the height of our stick being getting burnt down, okay? So there's, there's a couple of things. We need to make sure our amperage is correct, which we're in the ballpark. The next thing is to get comfortable. As I weld across here, I don't want to have to hold my breath. I don't want to have to slide my arm. I don't want to have to do all that silly stuff. What I'm going to do is just naturally let my hands fall as this rod gets shorter. A couple of things I'm looking for is I'm looking behind the rod and I'm watching the C shape of the puddle. That's the molten metal. The rod is creating the puddle. This is melting and it's creating a puddle. I'm controlling the puddle by my travel speed and my arc length. So travel speed is how far or how fast I go across to. Okay, so I'm, my travel speed is dictated by my puddle. I want something about, ah, I don't know, quarter to three eighths of an inch wide. And I wanna maintain that width all the way across. The other thing is, is our lead angle. We want about a 10 to 20 degree lead angle. So we don't wanna weld going this direction, like with that angle. That would be us going this direction. So we kinda want a, a, a 10, 12, 15 degree lean this way, okay? We don't wanna lay it, although it'll weld like that, okay? Yeah, and it'll weld like this, you can, yeah, but you know, we're trying to do this the correct way. 10 degrees is plenty, and we'll just come across here just like this, okay? You'll notice that this is my thumb. It's, notice it's doing that, and I'm left-handed. If I were a right-handed guy, the normal would be this. I'm gonna start over here. I've got my left elbow planted, and the, the same situation. I'm just gonna let it fall very naturally across here, okay? I've got a 10 degree going this way, and my weld's actually going that way. It's gonna be left to right us lefties weld right to left. We put our right arm down, okay? If I, was, if I was to walk up to this, it's just natural for me to be here. Some guys might be naturally on the other side. A right-handed guy might walk up to the table and be on this side. So it's just one of the things that we, that's one of the very first questions we ask our students, are you right or left-handed? Obviously, it's how they set up. So uh, we wanna make sure they're, they're set up correctly and comfortable. We inevitably get somebody who says, hey, I can weld better one-handed. I, I really don't buy that. I, I just, I don't see how you could weld any steadier than this right here, okay? Now, obviously, I can weld one-handed. I, I can, I can weld one-handed, and it looks almost as good or just as good as, but this is, we wanna, we wanna practice good habits, okay? There's plenty of time in the field where we can't reach something with two hands, and we can't, we can't get comfortable, so we have to, we have to weld out of position, but, here at school, we're gonna to try to get this done in a correct, and then we'll, we'll start with the cowboy stuff later as you get, as you get uh, a better and more skill, okay? So uh, what we're doing here, we're gonna strike an arc. It's gonna be a bright light, and we're just gonna cruise across here, and I'll chip it, we'll wire brush it, and I'll kind of show you what's going on, okay? It'll be in the flat position. All right, so the, fir the first what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a, a good shot of just me cruising across here, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna probably cowboy it up and weld one-handed, just so I can point out exactly what I'm looking at, okay? So angles and all that stuff are a given. We know we're good there. So we're gonna strike our arc and I'm gonna tell you what we're looking at. So here we go. I'm looking at this C-shape back here, right here. Again, this C shape right here.
One more time, we're looking at this C right here. All right, so you can tell we started with this, okay? Now we burn it down to this. All right, so as, as this is burning, I have to adjust that. So the, what did we talk about the first, the first arc length? I'm, every once in a while, I can feel that rod bounce off the steel, which is, which is perfect. It doesn't have to, I just don't want you to ride on the steel, and I also don't want you to long arc it. So let's talk about, let's look at it first. So what causes this thing to be uniform is my travel speed, okay? I'm going across here at a very nice pace. You can see that. So even if you weren't a welder, you can see that this was, I ate a banana for breakfast is why that's a little crooked. But for the most part, it's pretty straight. And what's going on here is the rods out here, this is a crater, okay? So what that electricity is doing, it's, it's melting the base metal and it's melting this rod and mixing it together. That's what makes this weld stick, okay? Uh, as it does that, we're watching this, this C shape. And as that C shape, it's called a puddle. This, this last piece right here is called a crater, but behind that's the puddle. That's all I'm doing is I'm watching the puddle. The puddle's telling me speed up, slow down. You know, what's the perfect size for a 7018? I would say, you know, three eighths of an inch, somewhere in there. And our guys get used to this very quickly on how fast to go across there. So if you'll notice that rod went pretty much all the way across there and I can throw it away and we can start welding again. So this is day one right here. We're gonna get positioned up, we're gonna get comfortable and we're gonna strike our arc and we're gonna take off, okay? So let's talk a little bit about some chemistry, not really, just some, some stuff that's going on. This stuff that I took off here, this outside of this rod has flux on it, okay? This flux has a chemical composition there's potassium and some other stuff in there and it's called low hydrogen. We keep this rod in an oven. It doesn't like moisture. Now they've, they've come a long way on how much moisture this thing will absorb, but we actually keep it in an oven to keep it, the moisture out of it, okay? So this, this on the outside of this rod is called flux. So anyway, it's brittle. So the weld wire is actually inside it. The flux just melts. The, it melts and becomes slag. This slag protects the molten metal from our atmosphere. So you guys that weld and you see pinholes in your weld, it's because it wasn't protected and some oxygen got in there. This rod, low hydrogen, is not very susceptible to pinholes. Uh, I know uh, I've welded some 6013 and stuff like that where you go across there and you think everything's perfect, you chip it and it's got some air holes in there. So 7018 is not susceptible to that if you do it correctly, okay? So we've got, Flux on the outside of the rod, the flux melts, becomes slag. This number one job of slag, other than keeping the metal protected, is to land on the corner of your eye or your lip, and it burns, and then you take your tongue and try to get it off your lip, and it burns your tongue or you, your eye. So uh, eye protection is critical when you do this. You also notice that when I chip, I'm not looking over it, smacking it like I'm killing a snake. All I gotta do is this and it comes off. If my metal's clean, my heat's right, everything's right, I don't have to chip a bunch out of there, okay? Arc flash is another thing. I'm protecting my skin and my eyes from arc flash. My hood, it's a bright light. So that bright light will sunburn you and it will sunburn your eyes. So we have to have eye protection. We have to have our, uh, our arms covered and things like that, okay? So anyway, flat position, it's, it's, it's just, getting comfortable, getting to able to, to strike that arc like we're landing an airplane. I talked to earlier about it. When that, when that bare metal hits the steel, it's gonna light and, and inevitably what happens is it scares you and you have a tendency to stick the rod. The rod, this rod does have a tendency to stick. So what we do is we take the power source off of it and we pull it off the steel and we start again. So sometimes you might see me tap this or smack it and then put it in my stinger. It's, I'm getting the slag that's on the end of this rod off so I can restart, okay? All right, so 
ASME and AWS recognize these positions. This is a one, okay? Horizontal's two. And again, horizontal, we would start from left to right and we would just adjust our rod angle a little bit, go across here. Vertical is three. We do vertical up, which is from the bottom up. It should look like that. And we do overhead. And a lot of young guys think that overhead is the hardest position. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw uh, a little bit, I disagree with that. So if you can weld in the flat position, which we just did, you can do the exact same thing in the overhead position. Same angle, same heat, same everything. I do a little trick out of here. I can put this coming out of my, like this, okay? The, the next thing is, is I just have to get comfortable. So I don't want my shoulders off my body, so I'm gonna use an armrest and things like that. But for the most part, same heat, same angle, same, same everything. So it's, it's not really that difficult, okay? And none of it's difficult. You're watching the puddle. The puddle's talking to you the whole time. Hey man, speed up, slow down. I'm too hot, I'm too cold. So if you understand what that puddle's doing, you're getting constantly, you're getting feedback the whole time from your well. So, you know, when you chip it, you should already know what it looks like. All right, so we went through the, all the positions. We're gonna talk, you know, there's our flat, okay? Hopefully you don't have a lot of questions. It's pretty cut and dry. Um, if your amperage is right, you're comfortable and you got some, some clean steel and uh, your rod angle's right, you're gonna produce something that looks like a weld. And then it's just practice, practice, practice. It's just like put your fingers on the fret of a guitar and strum, that's a chord. But now we got, we got to do repetitive, you know, repetitive, repetitive. So nothing comes easy. You got to just practice, practice. All right, so that wraps up uh, the flat portion of this video. The next video we're going to talk about is uh, three, which is uphill. So uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Thank you.